Good morning everyone, Grandpa Jake here from Funtime Grandpa. Today I'm just going to talk about a couple features that I've put into my Iris and my new uh, Solo, all from 3DI Robotics. And what I wanted to tell you about today is some products that came from IMP Concepts. Ian has been a great help in guiding me on to what I, I need and any help I needed. He was able to give it to me within moments. But basically, on my Iris, which has now got oh, about 600 and some flights on it, I decided that I would add a 3D axis gimbal and I ended up using the um, SteadyGo 3. But I had a few issues with that, but once I got that figured out with a firmware update, it works perfect. But I noticed when I would turn, like many of you will notice, you'll get the legs in the view of the camera. So you can go to like a narrow mode, but I, I like a, to keep on a medium mode, or even if you go to wide, it's going to cause a problem because you're going to see the legs. So I talked to Ian and he told me about his uh, retractable landing gear for the Iris, and it's, it's been great. Um, it works perfect. It allows you to do pretty much anything. Of course, if you're videoing, you're probably not going to do some Yahoo type flying. It's a gentle uh, mode where you're doing gentle turns and <clears throat> you'll never have a problem with getting the legs or anything else in the view. Like always, I keep my camera tilted just a little down a couple degrees so I don't get any prop um, fluttering, which you will get on a sunny day. And uh, I'll show you this. Um, I'm going to bring it in a little bit closer. But basically, if you follow the directions that come with the retractable landing gear, you'll have absolutely no issues. The one thing I'm going to definitely recommend is you do need a servo tester. They're about five bucks uh, through Hobby King. Um, the parts are reasonable uh, from Hobby King. The uh, servos for the retractable are about six bucks a piece. Um, from Hobby King are reasonable and the kit that, that Ian sells, uh, the 3D printed ones, are perfect. Um, everything went on great. Um, again, follow his instructions, but get the, get the servo tester because you are going to need to retract them and you want to keep them in, in an area where you can um, you know work with it as you're putting it together. But I'm going to bring the camera in closer in a moment to show you a couple highlights. But let me just uh, let me just pop this on real quick and just show you um, how it works. And I'll pause this in a minute and bring it back. I'll just raise it up so you can see. I am going to follow this up with some videos of it actually working in flight, which I was super impressed. Plus, it looked really, really cool. Okay. That gets that off the ground. Get my glasses out of the way. Plug a battery in. Turn the controller on. Give it a moment. And <clears throat> let me get the camera to sync here. So all I do is I programmed one of my switches. I'm actually using channel 7 for this. I had a little issue with channel 8. Not sure why. Mission Planner probably has something set in there. So all I did is switch 7 with 8 and it's not, not a problem at all. And you can do that real easy if you follow the instructions. But here I go with the button. They go up very quick. It's pretty neat. Um, I don't know if you can see with that light being bright there. but and I'll do it one more time just so you can see. It works fast. It works perfect. And like I said, not only does it look really cool when you're flying, but it takes all the, the leg views out of your videos, which makes it a lot easier than having to crop it. So let me just turn off the camera for a minute. I'm going to show you a couple little things. Okay, what I wanted to show you are a few um, features and how I installed this, which uh, made it easy for me is first I, I took the LEDs and I moved them from here to here which worked out perfect I brought their extended wires inside and then just wire tied them I used clips on each side you can't really see it here but the servo connectors are here and an extender so it can reach to the 4-in-1 uh, uh, splitter and um, basically it holds everything in place and it worked out good the only thing that I'll tell you to watch out for and it's in the it's in the instructions 
but if you do end up taking this piece which you'll see a little angle area here that faces towards the fuselage of your iris make sure it faces that way otherwise it won't shut completely and uh, that's about all you're going to have two wires to solder and you can connect them to any if you have a a battery output here or you can connect them right to where your battery is um, inside the iris that's the only thing you really have to connect but other than that uh, it's been flawless and uh, with over 600 flights on this um, I needed to make a few changes just to make it a little more fun but it's been a fantastic uh, multi-rotor and I highly recommend the iris to anybody that's looking for something it flies nice it uh, is very stable and with a few of these modifications on there can give you anything that you're looking for so uh, I'm gonna go on and just show you a couple other things from IMP concepts that I installed on my solo and then if you want to watch a little later there's uh, some videos of the flights of both of these and on the solo what I did is I put these extended feet uh, which brings it up a little bit higher. I do not have a gimbal on this one as of yet. Uh, I'm going to, uh, but for now I figured I'd put the extenders just to give it a little more ground clearance. And you can also get this with or without the, the little feet, but um, Ian sent the feet and I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, the other thing that I did, and that's inside here, and there's a, a video that somebody had posted, and it's basically... Um, where your GPS unit is what it does is it shields it a little bit more and keeps any any interference out or, or contact from the one that was installed that's the only issue that I have seen that if the the GPS goes out you need to flip over to manual really quick and my suggestion which was uh, suggested to me is um, program A as manual flight that way, if all of a sudden your GPS goes out, your, your uh, solo is going to drift. Immediately push A, bring it back into a safe area, wait till the GPS comes back, and then just press fly once, and you'll be back into GPS mode. So it's good, and you can still use your A, B buttons uh, for your points uh, with uh, your, your other uh, features, but program one of those, preferably the A, it's closest to your, your finger, to a manual. You'll, you'll be happy you did that. The other thing Ian um, had sent me from again IMP Concepts was these extended legs and what they do, I don't know if you can see them from here, well, if I don't tip everything over, right here, right on the underneath the antennas what they do it stops my iPad Air from tipping over. I also put an extender in that he sent me that holds my iPad Air really nice so I get a nice a nice uh, view of what the solo is seen but these little features worked out really good he's got some some nice uh, products to to look at again um, I think you're gonna really like the retractable landing gear it works flawless and it improves everything with the flight of the iris in my opinion so from Grandpa Jake, I'm going to let you go at this point. Uh, stick around and take a look at some of the videos. I'm going to take pieces of the highlights so you can see everything. So have a great day, and we'll talk to you all soon. Bye-bye. Okay, here we go. We're going to hit the retractable button right now. Really cool. Bring it back down once. 